Heard the call to build your small business? Make it happen with a .NET domain name, the place for dreamers for 30 years and counting. Visit keepdreamingup.net for tips and advice. Whether you're just getting started or looking to grow, that's keepdreamingup.net. Stop jumping on me. Ah, why are you doing that? Having a bad dog day? Rex, come back here. From police dogs to pet dogs, from potty training to pet peeves, number one best-selling author and 30-year canine trainer Andy Falco knows how to get to the meat of what's eating your dog. This is Falco Canine Dog Talk, the show that helps you and your dog create a relationship of love and respect. What a good boy. Good heel, Rex. I love you, Rex. And now here's your host, Andy Falco. Hello, my friends. This is Andy over at Falco Canine Academy's Train the Dog Trainer and Falco Canine's Dog Talk. I am so happy to be here with you again. This is great. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's one of the things that I struggled with early on. And uh, I can actually say uh, at time to time, I still kind of struggle with uh, branding um, and, and, and logo design and that kind of stuff because it's so important. I think the more important things are, the, the harder it is for um, for many of us, and uh, it's the thing we kind of um, uh, you know kind of get stuck on for a while, and uh, we ask opinions, and nobody ever agrees, and then we fall in love with something, and then we're so happy about it, then we show it to somebody, and they say, oh, that's kind of that's ugly. <laughs> so it is, <clears throat> and it's going to be something that you're going to have to learn to live with your your logo and your branding and your colors and your fonts and that kind of stuff. Once you once you put them into work. Uh, you know, put them onto something. Now, early on, you can change it if it doesn't really fit, you know, when you have a small following. But at some point, it'll be more difficult to change because um, uh, it, because so many people know about it. It's going to be on so many things. It'll be on your checks. It'll be on your uh, letterhead and your lo- and your um, Facebook page and your website and blah, 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 blah. And so this is a, this is a good one. Uh, don't forget, there uh, is a uh, Train the Dog Trainer journal that I have. Uh, the link is uh, in the, um, the description of this particular one. So uh, uh, often, uh, depending on where you're listening to this, there is a button you click on that says see more or details of this podcast or something like that. Uh, if you're listening on iHeartRadio or iTunes, um, you may have to click on something to see uh, all the information in the description in there is the link to the train the dog trainer journal and I think it's really important to all aspects of what I've been talking about thus far this being I believe episode 11 is that you want to write this stuff down and kind of draw it out and sketch it out and that kind of stuff and uh, the uh, the journaling that I talk about all the time just it, it fits everything <laughs> it really does just fit everything and so I encourage you to, if you don't get my journal get a journal of some sort and begin uh, journaling, whether it's on your iPad or whatever. Uh, again, I encourage you to actually use a pen and paper uh, because that really is the you know an important aspect of the importance of journaling is that your hand, your brain, and and the pen and the paper all work together to help you uh, in a lot of ways. Remember what it is that you're writing, you know, long longer term and uh, and almost make it unforgettable. Uh, and then you can visually see things, and it's the uh, artistic part of writing and, and drawing and drawing an arrow and circling something. It just it, it is so much better in a journal. So um, there you go on that. So let's uh, talk a, a little bit about um, why there is a reason. I actually had this uh, this uh, you know a I, I plan out my my podcast what I'm going to talk about, and uh, this was one of the the first things I thought about. But I waited <clears throat> until. Uh, this episode, and I probably could even wait it a little bit longer, but I, I think it's time for at least a you for you to start writing down some ideas, but possibly not. It's not ready. And again, this is for people that are just getting started. I know that there's probably trainers that are listening to this that already have a business started, and already have their logo and and stuff like that. But these are things maybe you can consider in in maybe possibly changing your logo a little bit or doing something slightly different based on what it is we're going to talk about today. So. Um, uh, begin if you're new and you're just being begin, uh, beginning um, that you uh, start working on your ideas for your logo uh, and your branding your colors your fonts that you're going to be using and um, and just begin writing down some ideas and then as time goes on your your first drawing your first uh, whatever your first go at creating a logo 
is probably in, in many cases, in most cases, and I would almost venture to say all cases, is not going to be the logo that you're going to use. Now, uh, I, I can't wait until somebody lets me know. I, the very first thing I, I designed was fantastic, and I look at it, and, I, and they're right. Um, but I, I can say that I've talked to many people. I, I, I venture to say probably close to 1,000 people in, that either are entrepreneurs, uh, coaches, um, uh, uh, graphic designers and say that uh, never uh, have they experienced where the first draft is what it is they keep. In some aspects, something changes and something uh, be- gets, gets altered. And so, sorry, I had to take a big gulp there, as you can tell. My, I, 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 anybody, I've been fighting this cold and this chest cold for, it, it seems like, about all summer long. <laughs> and I just can't seem to get rid of it. So I apologize every so often, and I probably should edit these things out as a professional uh, podcaster. This is actually like my fourth podcast that I've created. And so I probably should edit these things out, but I love just being me and keeping things in, unless it's really bad, like uh, uh, you know, my computer were to fall, uh, or I would fall out of my chair and you'd hear this big crap. You know, I actually, I probably would leave that in too, uh, just f- so that you guys could laugh at me. Um, okay, so let's begin thinking uh, again, back, back to why I waited uh, to do this later on is because part of your logo is going to be based on what your decision is in regard to um, what your system of training is, what type of animals you're going to be training um, in regard to aggressive or uh, small or large or um, uh, sheltered dogs, or even uh, when you're talking about sports, maybe uh, your uh, training is uh, you're, you're more interested in the sport of um, agility, or Schutzhund, or KMPV, or gosh, uh, there's so many um, uh, earth dog uh, training, um, uh, the police dogs, detection dogs, whatever it is, right? You're your, your logo will obviously need to reflect whatever your decisions have been made as to what type of dog you'll be training. Are you going to be a purely positive? Or are you going to be a, um, a reward-based training? Notice I didn't say purely positive and re-based, uh, uh, reward-based training are the same thing because they're not. They're two different things, at least in my mind, and nobody else may ever agree with me. But I'm telling you, purely positive uh, and reward-based training are not the same. Um, and uh, or and maybe you're electronic collar only person or you're a click and treat only person, uh, which is also not purely positive, nor is it reward based. <laughs> Strangely enough, uh, I know, but I have my thoughts and I have my reasons for not putting them all in the same category. So there you go. All right. So based on that, your logo will need to reflect probably if people are going to look at your logo and just quickly understand who you are and what it is you do, um, your logos needs to somehow in either color or in a graphic or in the type of font and how you have the font um, you know written you maybe it goes kind of sideways or up and down or however right if you look at sometimes you can look at uh, certain fonts and colors and kind of get an idea of what industry they're at right if they're green and uh and in a in a very um cursive type of thing it's going to be something that has to do with something holistic probably right so uh, you can say a lot just in the color and the type of font you're using and uh, and just look around just look at logos and of course i would get to this right this is really one of the most important things is that now that you're thinking about your logo and designing your logo you're going to be looking at every logo and wondering hmm did they make the right decision what does this lo- what does this logo say if it's just a word and a color in a certain type of color and a certain type of uh uh, a font that they're using, um, it, you know, what is, did they do the right thing? Could they have done something different? <laughs> you're going to look at Whole Foods and Coca-Cola and uh, Marlboro. <laughs> wow, that was a really big reach, uh, especially coming from Whole Foods <laughs> to Marlboro. Amazon and Apple and uh, just think all, every company has a logo and you're going to look at it and you're going to analyze it now. And that's what I want you to do. Analyze it and say, what is it that I like? What is it that I glean from looking at that logo? What is it that it says about who the founders are? Right, and this is really important. And I, I, some people just think, oh, "I'll just put up a name, and that'll be it," uh, and don't put a lot of thought into the logo. And you can see those too. Re- re- identify those logos that you see and say, "Wow, they didn't put a lot of thought in that logo." Uh, and this is where I begin to uh, tell you something. One of my pet peeves is um, the m- 
God, it's just I, I can't I can't handle it. And I apologize for any of you listening that already have a dog paw or a cat paw or anything paw in your logo. It just drives me crazy um, because that does not. Okay, so I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I know somebody has a paw in their logo, but if you were to really look around and see uh, how many pet related um, uh, uh, products, services, um, uh, what else is there? What, uh, uh, practices have a paw on it, it, you will be overwhelmed if you really begin to look. And I think it's just so quick and easy. Like, it's got to be a paw. And we're going to put a paw and we'll put a heart around it. And that's going to be our logo. We love dogs, right? Oh, it, it, how much thought went into that, right? What, what color is the heart? It's red. What color is the paw? Brown or black, right? Or white because they're going to use the opposite of the colors, right? And so it, it just look around and I just, oh, I see a paw. I, I've had trainers work for me and they, they were putting together some type of service. And I like to design logos sometimes around certain services we're using. We have one for the Bed Bug Detection Dog Academy. We have a, a specific logo for um, police dogs. We have a specific logo about for Falco Security. We created other logos for different things. And uh, over the past, not, not always, and it's something that I started to do later on. And I wish I would have done it more because I think it's important also. But... Uh, I, I had some trainers on occasion would bring me a logo and it had a it always have a paw on it. I go, no, no, be more creative. Come on, stinking paws. I'm so tired of seeing paws. Veterinarians have paws on their logo. Uh, 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 groomers have paws on their logo. Uh, anybody that is uh, in the dog industry puts a paw in the logo. And uh, please don't do that. And if you already have done it, I, I get it. I, it's easy. Um, it, it, you're you're definitely if see, people see it they understand right away that it has something to do with animals right and so the recognizability I, I i get it it's really easy to do that but i'm encouraging anybody that's beginning to try to do something different the paw has been done the paw is in other logos and you want to set yourself apart from everybody else all right and so really take that in consideration your your colors are important i would encourage you uh, if your plan is to get on television, is to stay away from green um, to some level. Because if green is in your logo, and for whatever reason you are doing something, and I have had to do something where I was uh, in front of a green, green, green screen background. And I shoot in a lot of green screen stuff, the green screen being my background so that I could put a a different background of a, a new studio so that I can put myself in another city or state or country. If I can put myself in the middle of the ocean, uh, I've done stuff where we are uh, standing and behind us is the sky and we, we were talking about having something to do with flying. And so the green screen is an issue. If you have green in your logo and you're wearing a shirt with your logo on it, your logo will become invisible. Uh, it will be it will actually become transparent uh, and it'll be distracting. So um, just, just, <clears throat> in the case that you're planning on doing television, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the green can cause some grief um, uh, when, you're, when you're doing a lot of television. And you may have to have alternate designs, uh, alternate um, uh, branding colors when you're going on television. Blue can also be an issue, if they, but not very often do they use a blue screen. It is something that is used, uh, but you don't find it very often. So I wouldn't be that concerned about blue. I have a dark blue in our logo for Falco Canaan Academy, and it's never come up as to be an issue. And so think of those colors. What colors speak to you? What colors? Now we're going to get to the other reason why we waited. It speak to your customers. What colors speak to your perfect customer? Now, if you have a real perfect customer that you've designed your uh, avatar around, then take your logo that you've created and ask them, do you like my logo? Uh, another great thing to do, and we're going to get to some further details in regard to design uh, later on, but uh, I'm just giving you some things. Once you come up with logo, uh, what you can do, and that is you can come up with the different uh, logos that you've come up with or your graphic designer or your cousin Barney has come up with because he does graphic design um, and take three or four of them including some color changes, that kind of stuff, and put them on your Facebook page and ask people to rate them. Um, 99 Designs, which is a web-based uh, uh, um, service for creating anything graphic, uh, including book covers and, and logos and that kind of stuff, you, it is a great place to go. I would encourage you, if you are not graphic-minded, that you go to 99designs uh, and, and, have, and have them uh, battle over your 
logo design. And that's kind of what happens. You tell people what it is you want in, in your logo and what your thoughts are, what your colors are, and give them as much detail as possible. And then uh, graphic designers battle to win your business by buying the logo they designed for you. Uh, and that is a great way to go. Uh, 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 Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, is another one that I've used for a lot of things. They've even uh, designed a couple of the logos that uh, I just spoke about. Uh, and uh, I always tell them, never put a paw <laughs> in my logo. Uh, and so um, they, uh, and it's great, but it's, it's not as um, easy to get a good design out of Fiverr, at least not that I found. I, I have found one guy, uh, maybe it's two. I think I found two people that I go to specifically because they've been successful in the past. Uh, but it took me to go, you know, it took me like 25, 30 different uh, uh, people uh, paying $5 each for their samples of designs before I, I found one that actually worked. So you, we have to spend a little money to find the right one. It's not as much money. Uh, 99 designs is a little bit more expensive, but it's, uh, it, it gets really good. And there's others. So search on the internet and you'll find others. But 99 designs, um, uh, guru.com is another one that I've used to uh, find my editor for my book. Uh, for one of my books, actually, she's done maybe three of my books. Uh, I needed a graphic artist to for my children's book that my son and I uh, uh, wrote together and took to number one um, status, and um, and uh, found her on Fiverr. So it's not I'm not putting down Fiverr because obviously I use it. It's just uh, you know it depends on what it is you want to spend and how hard you want to work, right? And so I think that that's a good one too. Now. Um, the, uh, you know, it, again, it, depending on whether you're, you're going to do this yourself or you're going to have somebody else do it, there's other programs you can use. You can, uh, you can find them online, whether it is uh, something like Canva, which really isn't a logo, but you can, you know, kind of design a logo on, on, um, uh, on Canva. Um, more or less, that's more for branding your graphics after you've found a logo. It, it is a place where you're going to put your logo and then create your Facebook graphics and your, your Twitter graphics and Pinterest and that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I, I have created a logo on Canva. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I don't think I'm a great graphic designer and I don't think what I ever came up with in Canva, not, it's not Canva's fault. It's my fault because I'm a horrible, <laughs> I'm horrible at it, but, um, uh, you can, if you are good, right. And, and come up with something, uh, but it's usually square. Uh, and if you're you're planning on having a square logo, then it, it's possible that you can do that. Um, and uh, another one called Relay That, <clears throat> which I love for creating graphics. Again, it's not technically a logo designing platform, <clears throat> but it is one. And I am so sorry. There's nothing I can do about this if I'm going to continue my podcasting. Um, and so it is um, a Relay That is a great, great tool. And I, I talk about and I'm actually going to be talking about both those Canva and relay that in, in future podcasts. So stay tuned for that. All right. And there's others go on the online, uh, type in logo designers and things like that. And you'll come up with some others, uh, and that kind of stuff. But no, when you pick one that it really must speak to you, it's an important thing that you're going to have around a long time and the colors and everything must be, uh, in the, in the font, uh, style must be something that not on, again, not only you, it, it, we, we often think, do I like the logo? Yes, that's important, but does the people that you're trying to market to, do they like your logo? Is it attractive to them? Do they, would they thumbing through Facebook stop and go, oh, I need to see this because of your logo or because they recognize it's your logo, right? Does it stand out to where some, it will stop somebody on their, their thumbing through Facebook or Twitter or what have you? Uh, and so an important uh, thing to consider about your logo and your branding that it stops people in their track. And, uh, and, and to do your best to get, and does it stop the people that matter <laughs> is even more important. It may stop the wrong people, uh, but you want to make sure it stops the right people. All right. So super duper important. Uh, one other thing to consider is how does it look on in different formats? And is it easy to see if you are on television and it's bro embroidered on your shirt? Is it easily seen? when on camera is it can you can they can it be made out remember it's going to be really small by the time 
you know, that whatever angle that they're shooting you at and uh, the distance from you and the camera and then whatever they're watching it on, they could be watching you on their on their phone, probably more likely that's the way things are going now. Uh, and can it at least be made out? Right? And can it be seen? You don't want a lot of stuff on there. You don't want a lot of words, like 10, 15 words, or you know, in, in, in really difficult to read cursive. Too, too hard. It's just too hard to see. You don't want it to be that difficult to see. You want to be able to see it, what it says. So the company name for, uh, obviously, my dog training is Falco Canine Academy. Right? And so the most important thing that people remember is Falco. And so if you take a look at our design, Falco is in big, bold letters and takes up the majority of our logo. Uh, it has a dog over the top. It's red, white, and blue. And I'll talk more about why it was red, white, and blue a little bit later on. Uh, and then underneath, and it's a little bit smaller words, is Canine Academy, right? The dog is, is, is um, uh, you know, just a silhouette graphic. Uh, and, and it is easily seen and, and, and made out. And Falco, and you, so you see the dog and the Falco, and you pretty much know that my logo has to do with dogs. And then as you get closer, you can see the Canine Academy, right? Uh, the red, white, and blue um, is uh, significant uh, because the, that when I designed that or when actually um, uh, a friend of mine designed it, he works for, um, gosh, I don't think he works there anymore, so I probably shouldn't give out the name. Anyway, it was a great guy, worked for a, a, a t-shirt company, and he was their graphic designer. Uh, I knew him just from a friend of a friend, and we got to know each other, and he designed it, and we had green. Uh, as the as the color at one point for Falco Cannon Academy, I, uh, I I I don't know why he came up with that, but he thought that would be good because it was a color at the time that really spoke to people that were thinking of um, holistic, and and that was you know really interesting. Um, I think we also used dark blue because I was a police officer and we were training police dogs, and so we wanted to reflect who we were training. Um, we before that. Uh, the logo that he uh, he uh, used to design the current one we're using now um, was black and white and actually had a picture of my police dog, uh, his head, and then Falco coming off to the right. And I can't remember who designed that one. I think that was um, Wolf Printing in Anaheim, California. And I love that logo. It was black and white uh, in most cases. In, in many cases, the dog was in color, again, taken from an actual photograph. So my dog's face became the actual um, part of the logo. Uh, the difficult thing is in embroidery. It was difficult to embroider. It cost a lot to embroider if I really wanted it to, to be able to be seen. Um, and it was difficult. And uh, the Falco stood out, obviously, because it, like, like the current one, was in really big, bold letters, and Canine Academy was small. Uh, but the, uh, the, the picture in the graphic was just so difficult to deal with in many, many ways. And on letterhead and picture, uh, not pictures, um, on uh, my checks, on my invoices, and all that kind of stuff. It was fine, but just not great. So that's why we decided to change it. We mean being me. I, I often say we with Falco Canyon Academy. You should if you, uh, if you have other people in your business. It should not be all about you. So anyway, back to the logo. So, uh, so that's the one he worked with. Now back to the red, white, and blue is because when this uh, logo was being made, <clears throat> it was at the time of uh, 9-11. And so, of course, we all became very patriotic uh, after 9-11, and uh, it immediately turned to red, white, and blue and became our logo and has never changed. I have tried to change it probably three or four times, and the uproar uh, between my employees and my close customers who I uh, shared with them that I was changing the logo um, was so great that I've never been able, able to change it. <laughs> It has stayed the same because people were going to crucify me if I changed it. I just wanted something different, right? I just wanted to maybe change it even slightly. And they said, no, it, it, this is what it is we're used to. This is, it stands out. We recognize it when we see it. We know it's you. And I and I've not been able to change it. This is the reason why it's important to make sure that you get it right, right? Go through a couple variations. Make sure you send it out and have people look at it. Make sure that is something that you can live with for a very long period of time. All right, super important, super important, and that it matches your graphics. You're gonna make, or not your graphic, make sure it, it matches your branding. If you have specific colors, you wanna make sure it works with your specific colors yeah, because you're gonna use those colors in your website, in your uh, letterhead, in your um, Facebook page, in your graphics that are gonna be designed around whatever it is you're doing. You wanna make sure your logo works with your brand and your colors. 
So I wanted to make sure and, uh, and, and get some really good information for you to consider when designing your logo. And I have a bunch of stuff I've written down and I, uh, which I've, I've talked mostly about it up to this point. And then I had some other stuff and I wanted to uh, visit a couple websites and do some research and find out what some of the experts are saying. And I found this great article on Blue Soda Promo dot com it's blog it's the 10 it's uh, in their blog area and it's uh, 10 things you need to know about logo design and I will try to remember to put this also in the description so you can click on it and find it yourself and uh, it pretty much it covers much of what um, I also think is really important in which I've already talked to you about so I'm gonna go through these 10 things really quick and uh, so this podcast will be a little bit longer than most of them, but I think it's worth it. And I'm going to read from this blog and I'm trying to find out who wrote this. It is, um, I have the guy's picture, but I don't see his name. I want to make sure and give him credit. What is his name? Hold on. Let me look at the bottom. <laughs> oh, Matt Powers. Uh, Matt, Powder, uh, Matt Powers has the same measurements as LeBron James, but in no way looks like or can play basketball in the same fashion. He loves Chicago sports. Besides the Cubs, he likes winning too much. <laughs> he likes winning. That's in parentheses. He likes winning too much. Uh, and a good documentary. Matt also is, uh, is also a graphic designer, internet marketer with Blue Soda Promo. And you can follow him on Google. So uh, this Matt Powers put this together. And so let me start with... Uh, uh, number one, it says, uh, think big from the beginning. Winning the hearts and minds of consumers with a memorable logo can be the difference between success and failure of a business. Harsh, I know. Uh, I, a snappy logo can make people connect with your brand and recall your business down the road. I, identities are becoming less literal and instead more about the emotional connection one makes with it. Uh, his pro tip is spend the majority of the beginning stages sketching. Your first idea will not be your best. I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, yeah, it will not. And I've not known anybody to say that their first design was the best. But thinking big, uh, it's again, if Coca-Cola would have known uh, when, uh, and, I don't, and I can't think of the guy's name who uh, created Coca-Cola. I did know at some point. But anyway, uh, in coming up with that logo, what, what it would mean to people at this point um, it, you wonder, right? Did he know that it was going to be an iconic logo that people recognize all over the world? It doesn't. If you're in the Congo, they see that logo. They know it has to do with Coca-Cola soda, right? <laughs> if uh, Antarctica, if they see it, uh, you know, if they're uh, from uh, wherever, they that so it's iconic, right? So think big. Is this logo? If you're 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and you are <clears throat> doing whatever you're doing. Uh, are you going to still be happy with it? Is it going to be iconic? <clears throat> and you're going to be happy with it being that iconic with the design. All right. Um, tep uh, typography is important. This is number two. Typography, typography. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I normally don't acknowledge my mistakes, but uh, oh my gosh, that was a big one. Typography is so significant, it can make or break a logo. Fonts have a personality all of their own. Uh, they can tell consumers what type of brand they can expect. Pro tip, try at least 10 to 20 fonts before settling on one. Experiment with the size, spacing, and height. You can even try creating your own custom font. Wow, I, that's a lot of work. I don't know if I could do that, but that sounds like a good one to you. If you're good at that, I would say do that. You know, come up with something. If it comes from your heart and, and, and you, it is all about you, then um, you might come up with something really, really cool. But yeah, ty typography is so important. Um, and another, that's one of the things that's my weakness. I, I uh, there's the, you know, Arial and um, uh, gosh, I, I uh, Cambria uh, are the ones that stand out at me because I think those are the ones that are often um, the defaults that many people go to. And that's me, right? I just go to the default and sometimes I make it bold. Sometimes I make it uh, I italicized. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's tough, right? And so go through a few of them and one of them will stand out. And again, you can create your logo, uh, the picture part of it and use five different fonts and then set if you can't decide send them out to your friends and family and your perfect customers and see what they say which ones do they like and run a contest and the winner uh, the, on the one that you decide to use they the winner and they get you know a week's free training with you right and it'll get it'll cause more engagement it's a great way to cause engagement on your facebook page as you're trying to design your logo right and so uh, but don't forget about typography now and one of the things that i think is important is to remember that if you are using your name uh, Falco has become part of my name. 
Uh, and that is a long story, which I will share with you in an upcoming uh, episode of this podcast about how Falco became part of my name. Uh, it, it's uh, probably maybe an interesting story to some of you, and others probably think I'm cuckoo. But uh, it is uh, it isn't a significant uh, a story in my in my life. But so Falco Cannon Academy. Uh, became the name of my academy because it was my police dog and my police dog saved my life. And so that name uh, was important. So I want to make sure that the, the font really showed that name, that it really stood out. I wanted it to be important. I wanted it to be the biggest part of the logo. I wanted it to be the biggest part of the company because that that's how important it is to me. And I wanted it to be important to the brand. I wanted it to stand out and to be, hey, when people think about Falco, because there's a Falco Steel company, there's a, uh, we, had a, we had a security company called Falco Canine Security, um, but uh, there's a, not a lot of other Falcos. There's Falco uh, Rock Me Amadeus, right? Uh, you know, the, the singer. Um, uh, and uh, gosh, there's another one. I can't think of what it is. There's a, a, a chief of police or a sheriff named Falco that shows up in my Google uh, alerts every so often. So it, 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 I want Falco to be synonymous. All of you should think about the name uh, of whatever it is you're creating to be synonymous with your dog training business. And when people say it, they go, oh, the dog trainer, right? You, you want it to be the Kleenex, right? Kleenex is not the name of a thing. It's a brand, right? Uh, tissue uh, is the thing. Uh, but when we, no matter where we're at, when we need a tissue, many people say, can do anybody have a Kleenex around, right? Um, Xerox, back in the day, Xerox became the name for making a copy. Can you make a Xerox of this piece of this document? Can you make a Xerox of this uh, PDF, right? It, that became the thing when in fact it actually is the brand, right? You would like your name to become the thing, right? <laughs> when people talk about dog training, they would say, you know, I got to go Falco my, my dog, <laughs> Right, like my dog's got to go get falcoed, right? And that is that would be great. That sounds stupid now, but they probably would have thought, hey, it's it's stupid to say, hey, uh, would you make a Xerox of this, right? People, ah, oh, that sounds stupid, but in fact, it is. It's a Xerox. Oh, wait, what about Google, right? When you're searching for something on the internet, it, you could be ser- using Bing, but you'd be googling it because that is the the thing that you are doing. You are searching for more relevant information r- related to what it is that you're typing in, right? And that that you means you're googling something. And again, you could be using Bing or uh, whatever. I can't remember the other ones that are still out there. Uh, but um, that would be important. Wow, I just went on a whole tangent there. But the topography of that name is going to what's going is one of the things that's going to make it memorable. All right, color means a lot. Color gives meaning to everything around us, makes us think or feel a certain way. You also want to ensure that the colors you choose complement one another. Uh, uh, his pro tip is color theory can be tricky, but a basic understanding on how colors work can be a big advantage for your business. Remember my podcast on psychology, on the, um, the uh, personalities of people. Uh, th- this is the tricky part of colors. They, they mean a lot. They mean a lot to people. And so understanding that is so critical to a powerful logo right? If you take and change the color of some of the logos of Coca-Cola and make it pink instead, well, they do pink probably for uh, uh, breast cancer awareness. So let's use another one. If uh, it was chartreuse, would it mean the same, right? Would it really mean the same from their red? They're really known for the red. Now, it, again, it can change based on certain things that are going on in the world, but their logo is red. <clears throat> um, Apple changed theirs, right? There originally theirs was multicolored, and now it's a strong silver color, right? Really strong, like just a well-built machine, and the color of their phones and their computers. Uh, remember when uh, Apple had those multicolored computers all the time, and they decided, you know what, we're just going to go with one color. <laughs> we're no longer doing that kind of stuff. It was, it, there was, I'm sure there was a lot of thought that went into it, but it, but you recognize that that metallic color as being Apple. It is an Apple computer. Right. Uh, it used to be white was an Apple computer, but now it's this metallic, strong color. Their logo represents the same thing. And it really matters. It's really important. So think a lot about that on how your color um, matches up to who you are as a trainer, what type of dogs you're training, what type of people you're trying to attract and what it is you're trying to say with your training. And think about does your color match that? OK, really think about that. Your topography. Think big. Think about the color. Number four, 
easy on the effects. Oh my gosh, yeah, I've seen some logos that are just so crazy. In the world of Photoshop, we, uh, we have the ability to change just about any aspect of a logo. However, in almost every instance, less is more, and these effects only complicate things. Uh, his pro tip is if you choose to use one or more of these effects, your logo should not depend on it. Oh, interesting. Your logo should not depend on it. Um, one of the hardest logos I had to come up with was uh, the Healthy Dog Network. And uh, I don't know why, but I struggled over that logo for a good several months, probably three or four months. And I still don't know that I'm exactly happy with it. <laughs> it, it doesn't fit in. It's difficult because there's, thing, uh, there's things on it. And uh, I wish I, uh, this was a video because I'd show it what, what it looks like now. But there's just some things about that logo that um, in all the designs, one design looked that I was given, uh, it looked good up close, but as at a distance, it looked like um, something completely different, and wasn't it wasn't nice. And so, <laughs> uh, and uh, and so, it was hard. It really was a difficult. I don't know why it was making it so difficult. And I really, in the end, was not happy with with my decision. All right, so I have made many mistakes, and so that's why I'm here. That's why I have a podcast that I'm telling you about. It. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Uh, and I had too many effects. I think that was the one thing I wanted to to say so many things and couldn't settle in on just one or two, and it made it difficult to make the design. And so I encourage you to uh, to really think about having too much in your logo. How much more simple are the logo uh, is the logo for Apple? How simple is the logo for Coca Cola? Right. Uh, cursive writing with a red oval. <laughs> you can't get any more simple than that. And it works and it really does work. When you see that silver metallic apple, you know who it belongs to and what it is. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't. I'm just saying be careful about using too many. Uh, look at your logo from every angle. A logo may look fine. And this is number five. A logo may look fine and dandy, upright and against a white background, but your logo will be stamped on all kinds of marketing marketing materials. Um it's all, uh, it's all, oh, okay. In parentheses, it says, check out Blue Soda promo. It's all we do. So you can go to Blue Soda uh, and look at their Blue Soda promo and just see what it is they're talking about. The pro tip, make sure you look at it from every angle before something embarrassing happens. You're out a ton of money and back at square one. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with Healthy Dog Network. Um, it, 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 the, the, the one logo design, which I almost took, uh, I, I looked at a different angle. I should have saved my comments uh, from what I said before to now. But when I when I uh, when I was thinking about really going with it, I was I go, God, this is really cool. I really like it. <clears throat> but then I looked at it from this one angle, and I can't remember exactly how it was that it came about or what I looked at it, uh, or somebody maybe even brought it to my attention. And I now I that's all I could see. <laughs> I could see this thing that looked not very good, right? It was. Um, uh, it just wasn't good. I don't know how to describe it. And in, 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 I've already cussed on one of my podcasts. I don't want to do it again. But the way that it looked just looked bad. All right. And But I didn't see it. I was looking at it from this one angle and thought it was perfect. But then when I looked at another angle, oh, I go, oh, that's not going to be good. Because once people uh, identify that, that's all they're going to see. So look at it from every angle. Be careful. And again, have other people look at it. That's really one thing to do. They'll, they'll look at it at other angles and maybe an angle that you have not been able to look at it. And again, sometimes at a distance, it'll look different uh, as opposed to when it, you look at it up close. Avoid a rainbow. This is number seven. Avoid a rainbow. Oh, sorry. Number six. Use white space appropriately. White or negative space gives a logo balance. It also can act as another element without crowding. Pro tip, white space gives you the opportunity to add hidden elements, but watch out for the inappropriate space. All right, so yes. So um, I'm trying to think of, there's an example. I think FedEx uses a space. If you look at it, there's many things that are in the FedEx logo. You could just type this up. Do a Google search on, on hidden message in FedEx or something like that. I'm not sure how you could type that in, but it'll come up and there's things in the FedEx um, uh, logo that you didn't know were there probably. There's a spoon and there is something else and I can't really remember what it is. <clears throat> and there's reasoning behind that because I think in the beginning they were um, shipping all kinds of different things and one of those had to do with that with that reason why they use that spoon and you're gonna have to really look at it I, I probably should have looked at it because it just came to mind but there's hidden things in there and uh, and elements that uh, really stand out and that is in not the words right it's in the space between the words 
and they were able to use that to to really design something else. It's really creative. And uh, as we're talking, I'm going to try type in FedEx <laughs> and see if I can see their logo really fast and uh, give you some of those things. I've never done this on the podcast. Um, and oh wait, maybe it's not FedEx. Hold on. Oh yeah, it is. So there's an there's an arrow between the E and the X. So if you look at their logo, there's an arrow, and that is like the direction of travel that they're moving forward. Uh, and I thought there was a spoon in there somewhere. Oh my gosh. Uh, da, 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 da. And even the way they've written it in another way, they've, they've kind of put the FedEx inside of an arrow, which is the same size arrow that is between the E and the X. Oh darn. Oh, I think it's the spoon and the E. And so the E has a spoon that is significant. And again, you can look this stuff up and really see it in there. And somebody, you know, long ago pointed those out to me and they're in there and people will say it. So the, in the white space, there's hidden stuff in that one that really uh, just adds another, another dimension to your logo and it makes it pretty cool. Like a dog head, not a paw, but a dog head in, uh, you know, that's found within the words of the logos. And the way that, that in the font that you're using and the way that you're using it, you're able to put something else in there would, would, would be really cool. All right, uh, number seven, avoid a rainbow of colors. Uh, like we touched above, color is very important, yet of the top 100 brands in the world, 95% use only one or two colors in their logos. Uh, his pro tip is if it is necessary to use multiple colors, make sure that the logo also works in one color as well. All right, so in, in deciding uh, that, you know what, I wanna put about four or five colors in my logo, you want to also then make sure that you try it in one color. Can you still see it? Does it? Are you still able to make out the words and the picture if it turns into one color? The reason that's important is because there's some times that a, a Xerox copy is going to be made and the color is not going to transfer over. Um, if you are going to um, put it on... Um, say an easy up uh, and for whatever reason uh, you can only use one or two colors because that's what the, the people that make the easy up are able to do for you and they can only use white or only use black uh, because of whatever again the design of the easy up and it's going to be on the edge that people can see you want to make sure that when it's made into that one color that it doesn't look like a blob right a blob of uh, of something and maybe one or two words can be made out you want to make sure that without those colors you can still see what it says now this uh, website i'm on it has multiple colors and their logo which is blue soda promo uh, but you can when it's not when it's in one color you can still make out blue soda promo the way because the only thing i did is colorize uh, the soda part of their logo so you want to make sure that uh, you can see that all right <clears throat> Logos are, or number eight, logos are more than just a cool symbol or font. Logos are intended to be the face of a company. They don't necessarily sell a company or product, but over time, uh, help build trust. So the pro tip he has here is be smart, precise, and direct with your logo. Logos are more important than just cool symbols or font. Logos are intended to be the face of a company. Again, I can name those ones I've already named, FedEx, uh, Apple. Um, UPS, very simple, right? UPS, very simple. Uh, and their logo is very simple. You got uh, Best Buy, you know, the big yellow ticket. If you see just the big yellow ticket, it stands out, right? It's, it's more than a cool symbol. It is the face, that big yellow ticket is the face of uh, Best Buy, right? And really, and Coca-Cola, you don't need the letters in the words Coca-Cola. When you see that red oval, you know it's probably Coca-Cola. The first thing you're gonna think of is Coca-Cola. You see the apple without the metallic gray in the middle, uh, just the outline of, a, of that apple, uh, and you know that it has to do with apple, right? Okay, so it, it's, uh, it, it'll become the face of the company. Be original. Don't copy another designer's work. There is nothing wrong with checking out the competition for inspiration, which I told you to do. But copying another person's ideas or work is just plain wrong. Stand out on your own. The pro tip is if you succeed, the last thing you want is to have your logo mistaken for somebody else's. Correct, right? You don't. There's nobody on the planet that has Falco Canine Academy's logo. Nobody on the planet. Yet, I've had people try to steal my logo. I've had people try to steal the name. I've had people try to steal because it's so original. And they, have, and many of these people used to work for me, and they've gone off to. And it's so strange that they think that they can go with even within California and start up a business and call it Falco Canine Training and think and think that uh, they. Um, have tricked me, right? And open a website called Falco Canine Training and then use pictures of my training on their website of my dogs, of my customers. Uh, I've, had, I've had it happen more than once, believe it or not. There's several 
people over the years who have tried to take my logo and my name and create their own dog training business using my logo and my name and my history. I've had people say that they are the founders of Falco Canine Academy and I work for them. Um, yes, and very effectively to the point where I had the customers coming back at me and saying, how dare you try to uh, discredit uh, this person, this girl, this woman uh, who's married to a police officer um, uh, and how dare uh, you take away her business? What? <laughs> I rolled up my sleeve and showed him the tattoo of my police dog with Falco underneath and say, this is my freaking business. How dare you? I had a major company, a huge company, one that you've probably been to and it's, you probably were the happiest person on earth when you went there. And they pulled me in and says, how dare you say that you're the owner of Falco Cana Academy when in fact this woman is the owner of Falco. What are you talking about? Uh, did you not see all the news articles and me on television with my police dog um, when you decided to hire me? That you think she came up with the company and then somehow I became uh, who I am and, and just happened to have a dog named Falco that was a police dog? Um, so strange. But um, yeah, it, it, I think that it's so original that you can also have, the, have that kind of thing happening. But it stands out so much that it's impossible for somebody to steal it without realizing that uh you know that it's a stolen logo right that's how original it is that uh if it's not original they can steal it and people think well oh, uh, i don't know it, it sound it, it's so generic you know who really cares if you call your dog training business dog training business um it's going to be hard for you to claim it as your own because it's not original all right all right Sorry, I went on that rant, but it, it, it still strikes a chord, and it still happens, uh, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> All right. And I love how many people put down my dog training, but so many people want to be it, and that's so bizarre. All right. Uh, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, this is almost in every list, by the way. Uh, number 10, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, the simpler the logo, the more recognizable it will be. Uh, the it's ten, number 10 on our list, but should be followed from the beginning. Break your logo down to only the absolute essentials. Do you really need that background element? Are all the colors needed? Is the name even necessary? Right. Apple doesn't have a name on their logo. All these questions and more should be asked before you present your logo to the world. And uh, if you need any more advice on this, just go to their website, which again is, I just want to make sure and fully give them credit because I read the whole thing, is bluesodapromo.com. It's, the blo it's their blog the 10 things you need to know about logo design. And it is written by Matt Powers. Matt Powers wrote this great article. Thank you, Matt, for writing this great article. I'm glad I could share it with the dog training world. And so uh, take all those things into consideration. Go to uh, a Blue Soda promo so you can you know see. I read everything, but you can go there and actually see, uh, I think, some of their samples and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and any other. And go to and just look at logos. You can type in logos in Google and just look at the different logos and see what stands out with you. Look at other ones and say, ah, oh, you know, that wasn't very creative. Uh, and um, But don't copy any of them, but use the information to create your own standout, uh, fantastic logo and branding and get it all done. Let's go. All right. It's time to begin the design. I would not settle in right now. I would give it time. The worst thing you could do, and I have done this again, I'm, I'm sharing uh, that I, I am not the best at some of the stuff that I'm telling you about. And that's how I know how it backfires on you. Don't put a logo together and, you know, in the same day, put it up and say, this is our, our logo, because it, you're going to take it down, and then you're going to start again and say, oops, that, I was really kidding about that logo. Here is our really our, our really good logo. You don't want to do that. You want to take your time. It's okay that you don't have a logo right now. Just have a name. Put it you know, on your Facebook page. You, you're coming with a logo. Put up your uh, logo designs on your Facebook page. Ask people what they think. Do it on your personal page. Uh, be careful, because friends and family can be cruel and, uh, and not really uh, informative. So just understand that that happens. Um, and, uh, and go from there. It's, uh, it's, this is really important, really important you get it right because you could be living with that logo for a very long time. You could be seen on television. You're going to want to put it on T-shirts and hats and um, uh, your, check, uh, your checks, your invoices. Your, it's going to be everywhere. You're going to, you're going to have it on T-shirts you're going to sell. Did I already say that? T-shirts you're going to No, I put it on your shirt. On T-shirts you're going to sell. On coffee cups, I already have some coffee cups that have uh, our logo on it. And so you are going to want to do the same thing. So make sure and get that done. All right. 
So that is it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, make sure and share this podcast with the other dog trainer friends or people that are just interested in dogs and maybe even people that are just interested in business because uh, most of the stuff I'm talking about it will fit into any business. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and do that too because I do a lot of business stuff for uh, uh, people other than dog trainers. All right, so that's it for me. Signing off for Falco Canine Academy's Train the Dog Trainer podcast and Falco Canine's Dog Talk. I will see you. I did it again. I will be talking to you at the next podcast. Take care and talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Falco Canine Dog Talk. The show that helps you and your dog create a relationship of love and respect. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address at www.falcocanineacademy.com. And like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Falco Canine Academy. Follow us on twitter.com slash Falco Canine Academy. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Falco 143. And remember, if you've got questions for Andy, call the K9 line at 714-798-9961. That's 714-798-9961. This is a production of Falco Enterprises Incorporated. All rights reserved. For my crazy day, my pack commute, all those unread emails in my inbox. But I'm getting stronger, faster, and pushing myself further every day. I don't care if I'm not like everyone else. This punching bag is the best way to end my day. <laughs> Fearless is knowing yoga isn't your style. That's the power of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Federal Employee Program. Learn more about our healthy benefits at fepblue.org slash get more.